Hello there, I'm Black Bright, broadcasting out of the UK. And um, for those of you who are visiting me for the first time, welcome. Um, subscribe, share, like uh, if you like the channel. And for my existing subscribers, I just want to show you that I appreciate you, hope you like what I'm doing, and so on and so on. Anyway, what I wanted to talk about is what Jamaica has done since its independence. Um, because Jamaica went independent in 1962, it's now 57 years, and when they went independent, they didn't realise that the UK and America were going to withdraw all their support. So they've been struggling for quite a long time. But more recently, they have been stabilised. Yes, they've been, there's been lots of murders and they're quite high on the crime chart, the violence chart. But by and large, they have stepped up in leaps and bounds. Um, not only do we have um, the top rate, the top artists, musical artists are from Jamaica. I don't want to, you know, when I mention Bob Marley, people say you always say Bob Marley as though Bob Marley is the only artist but we do know there's so many artists i mean i'm a dj and to be honest i get new music every week and i cannot play every track so to a kind of try and mention artists and with the with the um probably missing out you know, people are going to be offended. I prefer really not to mention any and just say that the heart of reggae comes from Jamaica. OK, and then we have the sports people, you know, Usain Bolt. You know, when you think about the fastest man in the world. You know, and Jamaica is, is a famous for so many different things. So, um, all too numerous to mention. I mean, the other day I heard that a, ja a Jamaican, you know, this Google is really freaking me out. I mean, my phone, sorry to change the subject, but my phone is upstairs in my bedroom and something is activating my Google to make it speak. That is spooky. I'm not saying, OK, Google, I'm not even going to say it loud, just in case it hears me. But I think that's qu it's quite disturbing. And on top of that, I've got it on Do Not Disturb, and yet it's still oh, so frustrating because it, it disturbs my concentration. So sorry about that, peeps. Anyway, what I was saying is Jamaica is just so resourceful. And so I just wanted to let you know about you know, some of its achievements since its independence and when it got its independence. I'm going to read it out to make it easier and so I don't flounder. I'll probably still flounder, but not as much. OK, so on the 5th of May 1953, Jamaica gained internal autonomy and in 1958 su superheaded the organisation of the West Indies Federation. A national Labour leader, Sir Alexander Bustamante, later campaigned to withdraw from the Federation. After a referendum, Jamaica became independent on August the 6th, 1962, but still remained in the Commonwealth. Uh, in 1997, the government signed a shiprider agreement allowing US authorities to enter Jamaican waters and search for vessels with Jamaican government's permission in order to fight drug trafficking. And in 2001, violence between politically connected gangs es escalated in Kingston, promoting fears that the tourist industry could suffer. But it's still flourishing, apparently. 1.7 million people go to Jamaica every year. Um, the concept of Caribbean unity was soon abandoned in 1961 when Jamaicans voted against the Federation of the West Indies. On the 6th of August 1962, Jamaica was granted its independence from England and Jamaica now has its own constitution which sets out the laws by which the people are governed. Alexander Bustamante was elected in April and became the first Prime Minister of Jamaica. On August 6, 1962, Jamaica became an independent nation and a member of the British Commonwealth. 
Jamaica becoming an independent nation now meant that Britain no longer controlled the affairs of the country. It's funny because I thought because Jamaica became independent, I thought it also um, wasn't, it didn't remain a member of the British Commonwealth. I don't know why I thought that, but they still kept that part. Anyway, um, there is a dispute whether the Arawak Indians were the first inhabitants of Jamaica. Um, it's said that the Olmec Z Colossi, or Amaru's, were actually the first inhabitants of Jamaica. Uh, Jamaica is an island in the West Indies, 90 miles, 145 kilometres south of Cuba and 100 miles, 161 kilometres west of Haiti. Um, I didn't really, so I didn't really, for, since the United Kingdom restricted immigration in 1967, the major flow of Jamaicans has been to the United States and Canada. About 20,000 Jamaicans immigrate to the United States each year. Another 200,000 visit annually. New York, Miami, Chicago and Hartford are among the US cities with a significant Jamaican population. Remittances from the expatriate communities in the United States, United Kingdom and Canada estimated at up to 1.6 billion a year making increasingly significant contributions to the Jamaican economy. You know, I heard something about that. When um, people leave their country and they go to another country, that country actually pays their country. It's a bit like Spain. We've got a lot of expats in Spain. But somehow Spain ends up giving the UK money for their expats. And I think this comes like something similar You know, because I've just come across it, I didn't really understand it. But it looks like these countries give back Jamaica 1.6 billion a year contributions for having their expat expatriate communities in their countries. Remittance from expatriate communities. That needs some investigation, that does. Because if these, if, if these countries like New York, the UK and Canada are paying Jamaica to have Jamaicans in their country, maybe that's why they want them out because they don't want to pay for them anymore. The plot thickens, you know, the plot thickens. I don't know about that. I'm going to have to look that one up and see what that's about. I sense another video coming along. Anyway, let me see what else I've got. Jamaica has natural resources, primarily bauxite, adequate water supplies and climate conducive to agriculture and tourism. The discovery of bauxite in the 1940s and the subsequent establishment of the bauxite alumina industry shifted Jamaica's economy from sugar and bananas. By the 1970s, Jamaica had emerged as a world leader in export of these minerals as foreign investment increased. So Jamaica's not doing too badly. Um, historically, Jamaica has had close ties with the UK, but trade, financial and cultural relationships with the United States are now predominant. So it looks like UK has been thrown to the curb. Another reason why they probably want them out of the country. Um, <clears throat> the United States is Jamaica's most important trading partner. Bilateral trade in goods in 2005 was over $2 billion. Jamaica is a popular destination for American tourists. More than 1.2 million Americans visited in 2006. That's quite a long time ago, so I'd need more recent figures to see if they're still visiting. In addition, some 10,000 American citizens, including many dual nationals born on the island, permanently reside in Jamaica. So don't you think it's ironic that despite um, the United States going over to Jamaica and actually 
residing there permanently, they've got the nerve to want to kick Jamaicans out of America. That's a bit of a nerve, isn't it? Anyway, the government of Jamaica also seeks to attract US investments and support efforts to create a free trade area of the Americans, FTAA. More than 80 US firms have operations in Jamaica and a total US investment is estimated at more than $3 billion. An office of the US and Foreign Commercial Service located in the embassy is located in the embassy. Okay, located in the embassy, actively assists American businesses seeking trade opportunities in Jamaica. The country is a beneficiary of the Caribbean Basin Trade Partner Act, CBTPA. The American Chamber of Commerce, which also is available to assist US business in Jamaica, has offices in Kingston. So we don't get to know all of this information about Jamaica. All we hear about Jamaica is the violence. So I think it's really important that people get to know exactly what Jamaica is doing apart from the killings that, you know, that we hear about all the time. Um, Jamaica is said to be the Caribbean's lar largest producer and exporter of marijuana. The efforts of the Jamaica Constabulary Force and Jamaica Defence Force, JDF. Operation Kingfish launched 1,378 operations, resulting in the seizure of 56 vehicles, 57 boats, one aircraft, 206 firearms and two containers conveying drugs. Kingfish was also responsible for the seizures of over 13 metric tons of cocaine, mostly outside of Jamaica though, and over 27,390 pounds of compressed marijuana. Okay, that's nine kind of try to break this up in paragraphs so it kind of sinks. Now I'm just going to give you some basic facts about Jamaica. Uh, Jamaica is an island located in the Caribbean. In 2012 the population of Jamaica was estimated to be around 2.9 million. It hasn't changed much and the number of births exceed the number of deaths so it's been pretty stable. Um, the capital and largest city in Jamaica is Kingston. Kingston, uh, Kingston was founded in 1692 after Port Royal at the mouth of the harbour was destroyed by an earthquake, the core of the old city is a consciously planned rectangle with streets in a grid pattern. In 1703, the city became the commercial capital and in 1872, the political capital of Jamaica. The longest mountain range in Jamaica is called the Blue Mountains. The Blue Mountain Peak is the highest point of the island 2,256 metres, which is 7,402 feet. And of course, the Blue Mountain is where we get our coffee, best coffee in the world. Jamaica has a tropical climate with high temperatures and humid weather. In Jamaica, the climate is hot all the year round with little difference between winter and summer, just a few degrees. Even in winter, daytime temperatures are around 27 to 30 degrees. Uh, which is 81 to 86 Fahrenheit. And nighttime temperatures are around 20 to 23 degrees, which is 68 to 73 degrees Fahrenheit. Jamaica is prone to the damage caused by hurricanes. Jamaica's eight native state snake species, but relax because none of them are venomous. In Jamaica, they drive on the left hand side of the road. Sugar made in Jamaica is one of the most valuable possessions in the world and for more than 150 years. Can you imagine that? Sugar. The currency in is the Jamaican dollar. Jamaica exports agricultural products such as bananas, coffee and sugar. Language spoken in Jamaica include Patois and Jamaican English. Reggae is a musical, like I said, originated in Jamaica and over 1.7 million tourists visit Jamaica every year. There's been a Bergen project, um, 20 billion restructuring of the main roads, because I'm giving you kind of a history, well, not really a history, but you know, what, how Jamaica has developed since its independence. Um, the Chinese um, gave 
what's it, 730 million grant for the highway. I don't know if that's a loan or whether it's an investment. I don't know what that is. Um, there's plans proceeding for the three miles overhead bridge. And they've got some beautiful videos of what it's going to look like. I don't know if it's started yet. Um, I did a video recently where Jamaica's released itself, you know, from the surveillance of the Inter International Monetary Fund. So they're just um, getting technical advice from them. So that is a part of independence, which is really, really good. Um, President Nana Addo Dankwa Akufo Addo. Wow. Um, he's the president of Ghana and he met with um, Jamaica head Andrew Holness in June and they're having a visa free so people will be able to go to Ghana with no visa from Jamaica. Um, and that is and then we had Kenya head of state just recently going to Jamaica um, to for commercial ties to strengthen partnerships. Um, his name is Uuru Kenyatta, President Uuru Kenyatta. And um, we used to have a group, a reggae group called Black Uuru. So that reminds me of him. Um, he would like to start direct flights from Nairobi to Jamaica. So it looks like there'll be direct flights from Ghana to Jamaica and Kenya to Jamaica, which is fantastic. Um, also signing up to four agreements for technical cooperation and tourism and sports. They intend to export coffee to Jamaica. So yes, um, we have had the, what do you call it? The state of emergency in Zosa which has reduced killings or murders by 22%. It's supposed to be coming out this, this month, actually, August. Um, but I don't know what's happening with that. I don't know what's causing it. They reckon it's poverty and gang violence and drug violence that's causing the, um, the violence. But it's not kind of affecting tourism because apparently the tourist areas are very safe. Thing. so I think it's probably just in the back streets so yeah I think um, yeah you know the arrangement with uh, the president of Ghana um, he was saying it marks the year of the return to Ghana which is a major landmark marketing campaign targeting the African American and diaspora market to mark 400 years of the first enslaved African arriving in Jamestown, Virginia. So I think that's why he went to Jamaica and um, had these bilateral talks with the prime minister. Um, yeah, and I think um, the two leaders, Uru Kenyatta and Andrew Holness, said air transport between Kenya and Caribbean will lead to more economic interaction, which will in turn help e economic growth and the people of both countries. They also said both countries will cooperate in sports development, especially in athletics, a sport in which the two countries are global icons, with Kenya leading in medium and long term distances, while Jamaica being a perennial global record setter in short distance running and I think it's to do with you know that sports um, online sports thing where they're going to have people in a great arena it might have something to do with that um, Holness said Kenya and Jamaica have had strong ties from the days of Marcus Garvey whose teachings of African unity had a strong impact on Kenya's push for independence from the British rule in 1960s. Oh, so Kenya went independent in the, around about the same time. So it looked like a lot of black countries um, went independent around in the 1960s. Um, the two leaders also noted that there was a need to strengthen cooperation between Kenya and Jamaica in the blue economy, which they said holds tremendous potential for wealth and job creation. So yeah, that's about it. Oh, and the hotspots um, for crime. Anybody visiting Jamaica? I mean, I'm intending to go to Montego Bay, so I'll make sure I avoid these areas, which is Norwood, Clavis Street, Hart Street, Rose Heights, Canterbury and Flankers. 
If anybody visiting Kingston, um, the crime hotspots are Mountain View, Arnett Gardens, Cassava Peace, Tivoli Gardens and Trenchtown. So on that note, I hope I've given you an overview of how Jamaica has developed since its independence in 1962. And we're now in 2019 and they seem to be pretty, doing pretty well. That's all for now. Bye bye.